Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, or good, good night from wherever in the world you're listening or seeing us. We are Ozen Curious. My name is Ines Narciso on Twitter handle IWN underscore LX. And we have a really, really interesting interview to give you guys today. But first, before I'm gonna pass it on to my colleague, Christina. Hi everyone, welcome on my side as well. My name is Christina Lecati, and you can find me on Twitter with the same name, Christina Lecati. And I will pass it on to Lauren, who will also introduce our speaker. Thanks, Christina, and hi everyone. Thanks for tuning in today's uh, no, not today's, but this week's uh, special um, interview. And I, yeah, as Christina said, so I have the honor to interview and also to introduce our special guest today. And without further ado, let me introduce her. Her name is Lana. So first of all, welcome, uh, Lana. Thank you. Hi, so everyone. Lana, uh, so Lana, she is an analyst at a German law enforcement agency, and she has uh, lots of experience in the realm of OSINT, especially uh, social media intelligence. And her work, work focuses primarily on identifying uh, threats and also working in the context of extremism and uh, slash uh, terrorism, if that's correct. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this episode because I've got loads of questions and also because it's one of the topics I'm very interested in. So hopefully this is also something uh, that our listeners are interested in. Uh, so be before I come to the first question, Lana, uh, again, thank you so much for taking the time and talking to us. And uh, without further ado, let me just start off with a question we ask everyone on this show, which is basically, what is your story? So how did you get into open source intelligence? And perhaps you can also touch upon, you know, uh, the work, how you kind of like came into contact with open source intelligence, specifically in the law enforcement context. Sure. Um, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a big uh, honor for me and I can answer your question. It's the answer is pretty unspectacular. So I was, I came from academia. I was, uh, I studied languages and criminal law and I was almost ready with my PhD and um, I was reading job postings and uh, my PhD was pretty hard. So I wanted to do something fun and exciting. So um, I thought, um, the posting was really interesting. They were searching for an in internet analyst for the police. Um, and it sounded excited, but uh, exciting, but I was pretty sure that I had no uh, chance to get this job, but I decided to apply and try my luck. And um, I was advised for the job and for the job interview. And so I did some tests. And after some months, I received a call and they told me I'm in. And since this time I am in, in this job and working for the police. Now that's that's interesting. So uh, that went also fast, I would say. Like, so you applied for a job, and a couple of weeks later, you got it in. Uh, it's very exciting. So when, when you compare some months. this, <laughs> yeah, a couple of months. Uh, so what interests me as well, um, also kind of like um, comparing always the the world of OSINT with academia, because there are lots of parallels. Of course, it's two different disciplines. But there are a bunch of overlaps when it comes to research methods. So, um, how do you see, or what do you think is like a, the biggest difference between the world of OSINT or open source intelligence techniques and methods, uh, in contrast to you know uh, writing your PhD, for instance? Mm, I think there are many similarities. It's just it's always um, fascinating because you know you have your question. Mostly you have a question what you are searching for. And this is the same in, in, in science. You, you can't research without the question. You need, you need a way where you are going. And um, I think the other thing is being as not, not, not natural as, as possible. And it's the same in, um, in uh, science and in uh, investigating because you don't wanna have any bias. You wanna see the whole picture. You don't want to uh, forget the context, you know. You need mm. when when you see something, it doesn't mean that it is like this. Because if you don't have the whole information, it could be the opposite of it. I think you know what what I mean. So um, it's the same in science. You want to understand the truth. Uh, the the what is the truth? You want to understand what happened, <laughs> or what is going to happen. So um, 
I'm pretty fascinated by both science and uh, investigating, but I like investigating because it's from the real world. You have real people, you have real cases, and it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I think it's this, um, this mentality that you have to have to be in this business. You have to feel the need to investigate and discover something, right? And so our second question here would be, if someone wanted to work in the law enforcement in the OSINT field, can you describe what a typical day would look like? How would the, yeah, how would a normal day be? Mm -hmm. If you hear the sound of this is my cat, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he enjoys it too. Um, yeah, yeah I, I would say there is no normal day in, in our job. So it mostly depends on the department you are working for and the stuff is, uh, that is happening at the moment. Sure, uh, most uh, of you, if, if you work in this um, place, you have to go in the morning to work, you go back in the evening. It's kind of a normal job. You have your bosses, you have your colleagues, mostly you have your meal time or your coffee. Uh, but on the other side, depending on what department you are working for, it can get pretty crazy and stressful. Sometimes you need to do a long shift at day or sometimes at night. Um, it always depends on the situation. So, um, you see, as an OSINT analyst, it's not about being a shining star, finding some stuff in the internet and getting applause for it. Uh, your job is serving the guys who are investigating out there or helping the, the guys to find stuff they, they're searching for. Investigating or preventing danger for the public. So, um, the science it, it, heroes, huh? Yeah, and, and um, mostly it's good when you can adapt yourself fast to the situation and support the guys or girls to, uh, with actionable information. And mostly it's not only understanding the situation fast and defining a research question, it's also analyzing the information you find and writing comprehensive reports. In many cases, you write the report much longer than you search for the stuff. Mm. You mentioned there, there are so many points and questions I have right now, but I'll, I will wait. <laughs> uh, but okay. there's one thing. <laughs> but I will, yeah, uh, there's one thing you mentioned, which is serving. That word, serving, and oftentimes, um, not oftentimes, but sometimes, people reach out to me uh, on Twitter or LinkedIn and ask me, "Hey, I want to get into terrorism and I want to get into OSINT. What can you recommend?" And uh, I can also see from these questions that people have the interest in, you know, re doing some OSINT or even start doing some work in the terrorism field. But they, they tend to forget that with this OSINT, at the end of the day, you have to produce something to call it intelligence. You have to write a report. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you also have to serve someone because it's not, you, you're just not going to go on, on the internet to find something interesting and then write uh, an article about it for the sake of i found this this is cool i mean it's also something interesting and we do this as well to share knowledge but in the real osint world um it's about as you said like serving someone so you write your reports to prevent you know bad things from happening and mm -hmm. uh, can you elaborate on this because i find this very interesting and also very important to highlight that you know yeah. osint is created or is produced through going through the intelligence cycle and how much time do you actually have in a typical normal uh, working day to really do like the cool stuff that we all like to do geolocations and you know go on social media and find all this interesting stuff like can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about how much work you spend or how much time you spent on these fun things and cool things we always talk about and how much time do you actually write reports and do the kind of like administrative work which comes along I, I can't tell you the uh, um, numbers. Or, uh, I can tell you uh, 30 minutes this and 30 minutes that, but um, it always depends on the case. And if you have a bigger case and you write a really long report, and um, I think it's not always fun. And it's not about it's not about the analyst, you know. It's it's not about being a diva. And it's uh, sometimes you have cases when it's 
live, something is happening live and you are supporting with OSINT. And in this case, it's, it's also not being a diva or being in the middle of the attention. It's about your purpose, about your mission. You are, you are searching for stuff that is needed in this moment. And um, I think that the danger is, is because it's fun, you think it's some, you have the, uh, you think it's some kind of a game, you know, it's just a gamif gamification of searching. But in real life, you have real people, you have real um, crimes, you have real situations who are, which are dangerous and people getting injured. And um, I think you need to be professional not to get too involved with your ego, put your ego outside and care for your job, you know, because you don't have the time sometimes. Sometimes it's, get, it's, it's really fast, sometimes it's long, sometimes it's fast, but um, it's not a game. Uh, you need to think of the people you are investigating and the people you are trying to protect. So um, that's why I'm always thinking, yeah, guys, it's it's nice and it's it's fancy being an awesome analyst, but it's not about you. It's about your uh, occupation and your information that needs to help the other people who are working with it, and uh, mostly it's people who are making decisions, and maybe they are the heroes and not you. So it's not about being a hero; it's about serving, like you said. Yeah. I don't want to preach. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. uh, it's important to to be here that because the ego gets in the way of a lot of professions, and this is definitely a profession. That where it shouldn't be because it is a position of service, especially when with law enforcement, and time is very limited at times. So it's good that this is heard. Yeah, you need sometimes to listen to people. Sometimes you are wrong. Sometimes you need to um, rethink stuff and um, listen to some suggestions. And if you if you are not um, uh, if you can't work with critic then you have a problem. Sometimes you write a report and somebody is correcting your report and says, no, you can't say all this. And, it, and this is the process where you are learning to be a good analyst. So, um, yeah, but I don't know everything. You know, it's it's my opinion. But maybe it's some uh -huh. other... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's also our opinion, so... Anna, you were speaking about um, biases and how we need to be aware of our biases to, to, to be a good analyst. And this will be even more important, in, of course, in law enforcement where you have such a responsibility in what you are writing and reporting on. So my, my question would be, what in a day-to-day -day basis, what are the biggest challenges that you are facing uh, in this particular environment when you're doing uh, OSINT uh, operations? Mm -hmm. As an honest OSINT analyst, you have usual OSINT research problems. For example, the fast changing techniques in, uh, of your targets, um, getting more, um, your targets are getting more and more masked and covered your target migrating from one platform to another. Um, as Nico said one time, uh, sometimes you see stuff that you can't unsee. So um, if you are watching some really brutal stuff, you need to be careful because um, sometimes you don't feel it at the moment, but you could dream of it or you can feel it some days later. So. Be careful what you are watching. There are some techniques not to be that exposed, maybe not hearing the sound, putting the sound off or not he uh, doing it alone, uh, not alone in a dark room, but uh, with colleagues or maybe talking about what you've seen. So uh, thinking of your uh, psychological health is <laughs> a good thing. I think so. I, I don't think that everybody thinks like this. But I think that's not a problem if you say I don't want to see it or, or it's not mm -hmm. it's my 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 border. I don't want to see uh, children dying or something. I, I wouldn't um, digest as well, and it's okay because we are humans, you know. And um, but mostly you look at this stuff because you have a mission and you know why you are watching it. So I don't watch stuff which is really really brutal for if I don't need to, but if I have a question that I need to answer, then I will do it because it's my job, you know? And um, yeah, 
um what was i talking about brutal stuff yeah and uh, you have legal boundaries and um you have uh, some ethical questions you need to ask yourself and if you look at the police work in europe you have very different laws and it certainly concerns all the investigations um it depends on how much money your authority also it depends on how much money your authority invest in online investigations and also um questions like how many analysts do you have in your team or how good is your software or hardware and if you ask me i would always prefer a better and smarter analyst than a better software or a better um, artificial intelligence or something because i think mostly it's the human mind and the will the curiosity the will and the creativity um which is a game changer in our ozone research and what i also wanted to say it's um sometimes it's hard with the communication with your investigate uh, investigators or your police guys your officers it can be also a challenge you need to listen and try to understand how you can help him or her with all them sometimes they don't know what is possible so you need to explain it to them and um if the situation is very exciting and everybody is getting really excited so you need to calm down and try to understand what is needed from your perspective as an ozone analyst and what makes sense um and it doesn't make sense uh, to search faster and uh, more nervous uh, to do it more fast if you don't know or you have no clue what you are searching for so yeah try to understand where do you want to go and then oh. do it <laughs> for, I, for I, I, should i yeah i basically i wanted to stage here that what you said that you need to be level-headed that you need to be aware of uh, your thoughts and of your mental state because uh, when when your mental state gets affected your mental health if you see something really rough and you cannot uh, sleep let's say for two nights uh, but also um, you develop this um instinct not to say something like that again or not to process this information it also affects your analytical process and it also affects the intel part i guess so mm -hmm. i really like that you pointed out and that you said that as an analyst especially in law enforcement you need to watch out of your mental health and also to control emotions when something is extremely exciting um because it affects the the end product the intel work that's yeah, what i want yeah. to comment mm -hmm. I think you you can't really listen to the questions. You can't understand the situation if you are too excited. So if everybody is freaking out, you need to calm down because you don't know what you're gonna do. Because uh, yeah, okay, I can freak out, but what is the question? What what I'm searching for? So like, what do you want from me? <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah, you are laughing, but it's it's normal. I know. Know. Yeah. Slow. Like to be slow, like in slow motion, say, "Yeah, I listen to you. Tell me what is the problem, and um, don't freak out because it doesn't help." I I also wanted to ask because you touched upon so many interesting points, like you mentioned software solutions. But before we maybe talk about this, um, if someone wanted to, you know, get started in this world, apply for a position at the police, law enforcement, wherever, and work as an OSINT analyst what key characteristics should that person have so how what do you say like if you were to choose an analyst or recruit someone what would mm. you look for you know and i see that sometimes in, in authorities the people are having some categories category uh, what somebody studied like he studied this so he is this kind of person and he studied or she studied that but if i get somebody in my team i don't care what he studied i i care what he can do or she can do what languages he or she speak on what what skills do i have and uh, mostly the curiosity the the drive you know somebody if somebody has a drive you, you can't force somebody to have a drive you can't force somebody to have fun searching you know that's why i like the name wasn't curious because you you have this drive you you want to find the, the the answer to your question and um i think if if you have fun then you stay in this job and if you don't have fun and mostly i think you mostly leave the job and search for another job because you don't get happy and um 
I think most of the, many techniques and many stuff you can learn. So don't worry uh, if, if you like what you are doing. And um, yeah, about software, I don't talk about software. I don't talk about, about hardware, but um, yeah, I, I think the, the best solution would be if you have a team with people who are really diverse with uh, different talents. So if you have a special case, blah, blah, blah. So you have somebody who can speak this language and can do this and that. And then you are like a, a multiple tool, like this Swiss um, knife, you know, with different mm -hmm. um, yeah. solutions. So there is no one kind of guy or girl who does it. I think uh, there are many people who are really talented and many women who are really talented. So I like a mixed team and um, I don't think there is a, uh, one type of guy or girl who is needed to be there so and the will and the drive is really important mm -hmm. yeah i agree because you will at some point you will need to figure things out there are no easy answers many times when you investigate something and if you don't have the drive to keep searching to keep trying alternatives then um, you're uh, kind of done yeah, yeah, sometimes the answers are not spectacular, you know. Some people, yeah. uh, you know, so you, you see all this Netflix uh, uh, series where people get spectacular stuff, but life is not always spectacular and uh, fun. And sometimes the answers are boring, uh, but it doesn't mean that the boring answer is not useful. No, it's not about being ex having um, a show. It's not a show, it's, it's real life. So you need a usable, useful uh, answer for the question, which will help somebody who needs to make a decision to make the best decision that he can. And um, yeah, and people have some uh, romanticized uh, um, uh, image of an analyst. Uh, you see all these guys with fancy suits and uh, you know, and sometimes they are hacking stuff. And I think most of the stuff that you see I, wouldn't be even legal. So um, hmm, I don't want to do illegal stuff. I'm sorry. So, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah like it doesn't make sense working for the police yeah. and making illegal stuff. It's, it doesn't make sense for me. But OK, but but, you know, it's one is show and the other stuff is just real life. But it doesn't mean that it's not interesting. I think mm. sometimes things that are not spectacular sometimes also interesting like how no. people are thinking or when people are really um not sometimes are um um like black and white they're not then not, it's not black or white it's sometimes gray you know what i mean like yeah no mm. i i absolutely agree with you with what you just said that it's about helping decision makers even though it's kind of like as you said boring but i know what you mean that even even though you found the information uh, someone wanted to know to make a decision and you found it and you can verify that this is the information and then they can act upon it. Um, yeah. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need to worry. Like I talked to uh, last week with an analyst and she told me, ah, I found nothing, but, but mm, I, I don't feel good. And I told her sometimes you find nothing. It's okay. It's okay. Because sometimes you can't find not, uh, anything because, it's not findable or it's or it's not there <laughs> or you need more information to go on so it's it's not a catastrophe as it does makes you a bad analyst if you don't find anything so stay cool and uh, do your best and you know and and mm -hmm. maybe after some time you get more information and you can find more stuff or um, yeah so it's sometimes you have nothing, you have a zero answer, and sometimes you have a big answer, and stuff is moving. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Rana, I remember you saying that you lost almost as much time, or sometimes more time, with writing reports than actually with the searching part. And mm. I'm I'm from the same from a similar background, and and I I. <laughs> It made me laugh because I remember having this struggle as well. And I was wondering, is this one of the challenges that we as OSINT analysts may have in the future is how to make it uh, like information, how can we, we 
get information to people who need to make these decisions, get it faster or get it into paper faster? Or should we start to use other methodologies like video or or uh like oral briefing or what what are the, what do you think is how do you think things are going to develop because people have less and less time to read so this is mm -hmm. how on one side people have less and less time to read but on the other side as you said it's there's a lot of responsibility in these mm -hmm. uh, briefings so if it's said or if there's any chance of some misinterpretation then also things when they are in writing it's much easier to make it clear like we are not 100 sure that individual a is individual b or that they are the same person mm -hmm. or something like that so how do you feel things are are going to move forward in the future yeah i i can get you i get your point but um you, you must imagine um Mostly it's a document. If, if you write a report, it is a document. And if you work for law enforcement, then it can be you. It, there is a possibility that you need to defend it in front of the of a court. Um, so you need to present your results and reports in front in front of the judge in the, in a court. And it can be pretty exciting. And you need to show as plausible as you can how you um, came to your results so you so you can't do a video or uh, i don't know an audio so it's 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 a document and um you you can have a judge that has no clue what ozone is or you've never been on facebook and so on and um and you can be, have a judge or a defendant there ozone or cyber cracks and um sometimes you you need to talk about cases that are which you, you work about uh, you worked on and uh, one year ago and so if you don't document it well and if you don't write long reports you may forget it's yourself so um documentation is key and um and you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of the court like uh, this is stupid analyst and on the other side, you don't need to take stuff personally uh, that happens in the court. Uh, it's not about you as a person. It's your function as an analyst. And um, it can happen that the defendant will try uh, to question your competence. And um, if he can't re or she reject your results, maybe it's also a good uh, sign because if the results are good, they try to um, question your competence. Uh, but it's it's only a game, so you need to prepare yourself good. But if you have a life situation, then uh, you you can report on an, uh, another way. But um, if if it's an, an, a real investigation, it's a document, and you need this document. The judge needs the document, and the court needs the document. So you can't skip it. So be careful. Document everything. Make it look plausible so even the judge who is uh, the oldest uh, grandpa who never been in the internet he needs to understand how you come from a to b to c mm -hmm. and it, this is a problem with tools because if you say oh i pushed this button and uh, i had this result uh, the judge will, will ask you uh, but how do you know that this is real yeah. you, you need to uh, prove how you came to this result so yeah it's a dilemma because the the world is getting getting faster and faster, but um, but it's you know it's it's not about peanuts. Sometimes it's big cases, so it's about lives of people or um, questions about um, what what punishment uh, somebody gets. So so you need to write long reports, and it's okay. I think it's it's right because if you live in a legal system in a in a yeah. In a democracy, it is it is important that all these things get clear and um, uh, understandable for even for for some guys who have no clue. Yeah. yeah, very good points. Now I hope I don't preach again. But <laughs> no, it's, trust me, it's, it's so interesting, and it just keep thinking of so many different things, but obviously also we don't have just the time to talk about everything, but there's so many mm. interesting, and very good points uh, you made, honestly. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. 
Well, I, I hope I answered the question. Uh, so, yeah, what's, what's your question about? About this is an interesting topic about how certain tools, and this is something very particular of law enforcement as well, uh, are very non-transparent about how they reach their results. And besides the ethical and law privacy issues that every country has, and and yours as well. It's quite interesting, or at least it's sometimes it's frustrating. And we, what I would like to hear your opinion on why these some of these tools don't make it more transparent on the way they reach a result. So, on the way they connect, for example, data, or also on the way that algorithms work and how suggestions work. Um, so, I was wondering uh, what your thoughts are on on this. Mm. I think it's a question for the developers of the software or the tools because I think you need always to make things plausible and I suppose they are getting they are understanding it because um they see how how it works and you need you need to un, you need to explain how you came to your results because you you are living in a in a state of law <laughs> and you need uh, to make it plausible but um how they are making it and what thoughts they are having. I think there are so many tools and they're so international and they're coming from so different law um, uh, systems. So, you know, it's it, everything, everything in Ozen is so global. It's so hard to, to tell, uh, yeah, what, what is right and wrong. But I, I can only uh, think of my legal system and um, how it would be legal. And it, it is so important that it is legal and it is ethical. And um, yeah, what they are thinking, I, I, can, uh, ask, uh, I can say, please make it transparent because if it's not transparent, you have a problem in front of the court, just as easy as this. So, yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to say to <laughs> more <laughs> to this question. No, we are, don't don't worry. We are, we are all thinking. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I talk so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> it's great. So, Lana, uh, as a as trying to wrap it up, uh, you were talking also about uh, so legal restraints, ethical issues. Um, how do you think that OSINT should evolve in com relating to these issues? So how must the OSINT community position itself in the future to make sure that ethical boundaries and that legal issues uh, stay very clear and that there's not like uh, a loss to other less respectable um, behaviors. So how can we as a community get together to make sure that we stay on the right path? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know, you know, it's everyone can do those. And, you know, some guys are doing it for law enforcement and some guys are doing it for fun. But uh, I would say, please guys, be careful because your targets are real people. Their families are real people. Be mindful, be respectful, and please don't call people or do some other crazy stuff or write about people because if, if things could happen. You, you see, uh, when there was this riot on the Capitol and some people thought they've seen somebody in the crowd who looks like somebody they know, their neighbor, and then they they started calling him. They started searching for him. They started destroying his life. And this was a it was a mistake. It was not him. This was just somebody not thinking critically, thinking, okay, they, he looks like him. Let's let's dis disturb him or let's do stuff. I think this is dangerous because oh, you can see it in this uh, Netflix. Um, uh, series. I'm watching Netflix too, so I'm, I'm human too. And um, don't uh, f <clears throat> with cats. They uh, started uh, hunting some guy who just um, wasn't the guy who was killing the cats. But 
at the end, yeah, sometimes the end is pretty sad. So be mindful. I think as a community, we need to adopt some ethical boundaries. We need maybe exclude people who are um, um, doing stuff that is not ethical. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how the OSINT is going to involve because I don't have this um, crystal ball. <laughs> I wish I had it. And um, I think that it's, it's getting more and more hard to find stuff. And as a citizen, I think it's good because uh, our data is more, our privacy is more protected and people are watching their privacy. And as a citizen, it's good, but it doesn't make my work as an ozone analyst easier. Um, I think in the future, we're going to use multiple sources, but, but don't ask me what sources. And um, we need to adapt and it's getting harder. So we need to help each other, but... Uh, we need. I, I think the most important thing is to be mindful that this is not a game. It's 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 real uh, real life. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, I know you you can search for stuff like geolocate stuff and it's fun and it's not that dramatic. But some cases are dramatic. So yeah, I'm preaching again. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Just <laughs> stop preaching. <laughs> yeah, I hope I answered your question. You did, and I think we should uh, keep doing these conversations that we are doing in our interviews, in our webcasts as well, uh, between us in the industry, because in the end we do, in some sense, we do shape the future of OSINT as well, and we do discuss ethics between us, which is important, even mm -hmm. though there is no real legislation yet in some areas, but there are some gray areas still, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's um, when some something is technically possible, it doesn't mean it's legal and it doesn't mean it's ethically right. So um, you need to think, do I want to do it? And is it right to do it? And uh, only because it's openly available, it doesn't mean you can do everything you want. I, I think if you work for law enforcement, it doesn't mean you need... Uh, some people say, tell me, yeah, but it's openly available. I can I can do whatever I want. I say, uh, no, no, I don't think so. And, and the law says it's not, I, I know what you mean. There is a, a lot of gray, uh, um, gray matter <laughs> because it's, it's really new. As it, the laws are pretty old and the OZIP is pretty new and it needs to adapt to each other and it takes time. But um, yeah, I think you need to reflect yourself what you are doing because sometimes it's, the guys are children and they don't realize what they are doing and they put a lot of information, but it doesn't mean you need to repost it or make fun of it. Or I don't know what, there are so many things you can do on the internet and some things are just not okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So please do all for good, <laughs> not for bad. Don't be with the bad guys, be with the good guys. Okay, cool. Then uh, I think uh, that's it for, for this interview. Um, so we wanted to, again, thank you very much for coming on the show and sharing us, uh, with us uh, your story of how you got into OSINT um, and also how it looks like when working you know, for law enforcement, what you do on a daily basis and what challenges you face. So I, I think we heard lots of very interesting things and we also take lots of input from you and uh, it made me think as well about lots of different things. And I think we we have to continue these discussions, um, as Ines and Christina also mentioned, about around ethics, the legal boundaries, and uh, mm. so many other important points, but also on, you know, how we evolve or how OSINT evolves and what we should do, um, you know, to, to help this or to sh help shape the uh, this evolvement. Um, there's one last question we ask everyone, so you can uh, just give a quick answer, which is basically, about what you would like to learn, um, you know. Uh, so, what's the next thing you would love to to learn if you had time? Oh, I would love to learn everything. You know, I just I I take everything. Like <laughs> we had Corona, everything was online. I want to do it live. Yeah. I want to do it in person. I want to look in the eyes of the trainer, and oh, like uh, I don't care what. Um, 
it needs to be good yeah, yeah. but um oh, i don't know there's so many things that i would like to do and do some uh practicum how do you call it <laughs> watch how people um, work internship yeah. Internship, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's nice that you speak German. You understand me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, oh, I I can't get specific, but um, I'm always pretty greedy with knowledge because I I can't stop learning. I think it's it's a uh, really important. If you are an auditor, you need to learn all the time, and you need to have fun learning because if you don't have the fun, you will get frustrated, mm -hmm. and you need to have connections to people who are good and who gives you some information because you can't know everything alone. You need to have some exchange with people and talk with them and yeah. get the new hot stuff. And um, yeah, knowledge is that, great. <laughs> yeah. well, that, that's, that's a really good point uh, on which we will also end this interview. Stay curious and learn more. I really like it. I absolutely agree with it. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thanks again so much for your time sharing thank all your you. experience and knowledge <laughs> thank and it was you, Anna. really enjoyed it thank you thank, thank you, you for a good question <laughs> thank you bye goodbye bye. everyone bye everyone